Hi all, this is Jared Helfer with Bohm Software and we're here to talk about MIDI Translator Pro version 1.8. This video is going to cover a brief overview of the interface of MIDI Translator Pro, but we will be making videos in the future to cover features and functions of the software to, so you can best utilize it in your project. There are two key portions of MIDI Translator Pro. We have the preset list here, and we have our translators here. These translators are showing me the translators that are housed within my selected preset. At the top of the preset list is our project name. If I double click on that, we will get our project properties. The first option at the top is for author info. If I'm going to be sharing this project on the internet or on our forums, I might want to put some information as to who created it, as well as any comments as to how the project should work. Below that, we have our project default MIDI ports. Here I can select as many incoming or outgoing ports as I want that MIDI Translator will by default listen to and send all of its messaging out to. Also notice below, when I hover over this line of text, it turns green. If I select it, I get a longer entry of information. You will see these lines of notes throughout the software. These are hints and tips to help you better understand what the software is doing. You can select it to expand and select it to collapse. Below project default MIDI ports, we have our MIDI router. From here, I can connect any incoming port to any outgoing port, and it will pass all MIDI data through. So if I connect my base to MIDI Translator Virtual Out 2, anything that happens on my base controller will automatically be sent to this virtual port. With it selected, if I don't need it anymore, I can simply delete it. If I select a preset, a few things are going to happen. First, we'll see at the top that these menu buttons light up now and I can duplicate, rename, copy, paste, cut, and edit and delete the selected preset. Also our project properties has switched to preset properties and from here I can change the preset name as well as assign any preset default MIDI ports if they're different from the project default ports that we looked at earlier in our project properties. If I select a translator, the menu buttons at the top will now control that translator. So if I select the same duplicate button, it will duplicate the selected translator and no longer the preset. And we now have our translator options. At the top, I can select the name or whether or not it's active. Below that, I have my incoming message. This is selected now through a menu system. So if I select the dropdown, I can select the type of, men of message that I'm listening for. And then I have a whole host of options for MIDI messages. Below that, I have rules. Rules are a basic scripting language. From here, I can put in various types of code that will augment my incoming message and control how my outgoing message reacts. We will be doing many videos on the different ways to manage this. Below that, we have outgoing messages, which work exactly like incoming messages that we looked at earlier. At the bottom of the interface, we have our log window. From here, I can select a button and see all incoming and outgoing messages that are happening. This is very useful for troubleshooting any problems that I have with my controller. And if I go to my event monitor, I can see an overview of all of the different kinds of messages that are coming in and going out. They'll light up as an incoming and an outgoing message. And if translation is happening, this will light up as well as we see here. The last piece that we're going to look at is our settings, which we get to here. At the top, we have startup settings, appearance settings, but most importantly, virtual MIDI ports. MIDI Translator Pro offers up to nine bi-directional virtual MIDI ports that you can use to connect MIDI Translator Pro to any software on your computer. MIDI Translator Pro does need to be in between those um, ports, so at some point that port needs to be connected to MIDI Translator Pro. You cannot, for example, connect Ableton to Traktor, but you can connect Ableton to MIDI Translator and pass all of that data through to Traktor. And underneath here, we have two different options for port names. If you're using software like Traktor that will truncate your port names, you won't be able to see which number you're dealing with. You can opt to select short port names instead. It'll read out as BMT1 in or BMT3 out. So that's a brief description of the uh, interface for MIDI Translator Pro version 1.8. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to visit us at the forums at bohm.com forums. 
and we will be putting together a series of videos in the future to go into greater depth of the individual features and functions that we looked at in this video. Thank you very much for watching.